Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, question mark, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below. So what do I have going on for you for today? Today I'm bringing to you what I'm going to call a bleak to chic DIY. Now this is a series that I had started a few years ago and it's been a bit since I've added to it or done anything that I'd say falls in that category, but today's DIY most definitely does. I am DIYing these bleak tinsel bunnies. These things are funky. I'm not going to lie. I don't like them. I never have liked them. Tinsel just isn't my thing if you haven't caught on to that. If it was a twine bunny, probably wouldn't be touching it. If it was totally twine bunny, I wouldn't be touching it. But tinsel, I'm going to call it bleak. And I tell you, I have got a DIY in store for you today where I am turning these from bleak to something so rustic and farmhouse chic, I can hardly stand it using Dollar Tree items. I think I can go so far as to say I'm using 100% Dollar Tree items. And this is an adorable piece to add to your Easter decor this year. So I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. Let's jump into it and let's do some DIY in turning these tinsel bunnies into something so farmhouse chic, you're gonna love it. Alrighty, here we go. Let's do some DIY and on a budget. We are going to make this so farmhouse chic. You are going to love it. But in order to do that, we do need to remove this horrendous tinsel. Sorry for those of you who like it. Like I said, tinsel is just not my thing. So we're going to get rid of this and it is getting discarded. I'm not going to repurpose it. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm gonna start off by using some Crafter Square felt roll. I have this in my stash. These are good little things to pick up when you're at the Dollar Tree to put in your stash. This roll is a nice size roll, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay the bunny flat on there and just kind of rough cut around it on the bottom. And we're gonna need two pieces that are gonna cover this and on the top. And what's great, like I said, this roll is big enough for a dollar that it's gonna do that. Only one roll is needed. Awesome. I decided that I didn't like these hooks on the outside of this rabbit frame, so I'm taking just some wire cutters and I'm gonna snip them off. They snip off pretty easy. I'd say use wire cutters versus scissors because I think cutting through plastic like this is gonna just hammer your scissors, and so you can get wire cutters at the Dollar Tree. Again, this is one of those things that's good to have in your craft stash because I would say I use wire cutters quite often. And so yeah, I'm gonna go around this whole bunny and just cut all those off. Now that those pesky hooks are gone, we are in business and we are ready to move on. I'm gonna go ahead and place the bunny centered in the felt. Now, if I didn't mention this already, you don't wanna cut the felt true to size. You need it to be bigger than the bunny mold or frame itself because we are going to glue the two pieces of felt together like you see me doing here. Now, when you're placing the glue, to glue your pieces together. You don't want to put it on the plastic bunny itself. You want to run your glue right along the outside of it and just kind of sandwich it in there. Go in sections so your glue doesn't dry and just really kind of pinch it together and you'll see that as you're gluing it, that felt molds perfectly to the bunny frame, that plastic bunny frame that we're taking from Bleak to Chic. Did I mention that yet? We are. No more tinsel. We're going rustic. Now look there, just with the felt, it already looks better, doesn't it? So you can see how nicely the felt molded around it. Now we're just gonna take our scissors and we're gonna cut the excess fabric off. Now cutting the excess fabric off, you don't wanna go right up against the edge of the bunny where you place the glue. You wanna kinda cut right outside that hot glue line because if you cut right along the bunny, you're gonna reopen your felt and you're not gonna have enough felt to glue it back together. So you wanna give yourself about a half inch, quarter inch to a half inch allowance on the outside of where you're cutting off that felt. And 
And so again, this is what you should be left with. It doesn't need to be perfect because we are not leaving it with felt. The felt would just kind of just to give this some cushion because we are going to be using some Dollar Tree's Buffalo Check. One fat quarter is going to be enough for this because you're going to use half on the bottom and half on the top. And so I don't know why I was showing two. I think I thought I was going to need two, but once I kind of rotated it around, I was like, ha, huh, if I fold it in half this way, we only need one. And so yeah, we're using one. Just like we did with the felt, I'm gonna run some hot glue along the outside of the felt now, closing up the fabric. I use the felt because when I initially put the fabric over the top of the plastic bunny, you could really see the outlining and the plastic of the bunny. It wasn't padded, it just, I didn't like the way it looked and so I felt that using the felt would help disguise the frame of the bunny a bit and it did just that. If you don't wanna use felt and you just wanna go straight for the fabric, you can, but I do caution you that the pigmented lines of the frame of the bunny are going to show through the fabric. It's just gonna be very pigmented and sharp and it just didn't look as soft as I wanted it to. I wanted to give the fabric edges a more decorative edge when cutting off the excess fabric and since I have peaking shears I figured that this would be the perfect finishing touch. I feel like it's just little touches like this that you add to a DIY that finish it off and make all the difference and even add a bit of character I think. And if you happen to cut a bit too close like I did here you can go ahead and just take your hot glue run a bead of it there and just press those edges together and it's an easy fix this is a bunny it's spring and so I thought that adding an orange twine bow to this would give this bunny just the pop of color to add to that black and white buffalo check this bunny also needs a face so to do some whiskers, I'm just gonna take my twine and I'm gonna do it several layers thick or strands thick. Once I've got the thickness that I'm happy with, I'm gonna go ahead and just tie a knot in the middle of this twine, which is then going to act as the nose and go ahead and trim off those edges to make the whiskers as short or as long as you like them. And there with some twine, we just made a nose and whiskers. How easy peasy is that? And how rustic is it? Because we used twine. If you haven't picked these buttons up at the Dollar Tree, next time that you're there, you gotta keep your eye open for them because there's a lot of buttons in here and these are fun for eyes. And so I took a couple of the black eyes. I was kind of debating between black buttons and the wood buttons that you see off to the side there, but it just kind of made the bunny look funny with the natural wood. And so I figured I'm gonna go with the black. I did add two white dots to the eyes just because eyes always have those white dots. Kayla pointed that out to me. And so I added white dots just with some acrylic paint. Using some twine, I'm gonna make the buddy nose. This is a bit of a thicker twine. This is a twine that I get at Walmart. It's very inexpensive for $1.98 and I thought that this would be the perfect way to add a mouth to the bunny and finish it off. Now, because I'm gonna be hanging this up, I am using my go-to method of making a hanger because who wants to buy a hanger when you have twine on hand? Put a couple of knots on that, make it a couple of strands thick, just pound it with a stick or two of hot glue, as Kayla would say, and you are good to go. This bunny is not gonna come falling off your wall because the hanger broke. Okay, seriously? Look at how stinking cute this bunny is. We just took this bleak tinsel bunny into something that is rustic and farmhouse chic. I can hardly stand it. And did I say I think it's stinking adorable? Because I really do. Let me show you one more bunny that the Dollar Tree has that's made out of tinsel and how I transformed that one as well. A couple days after I had finished the first bunny, I was at the Dollar Tree because I live in there. I'm always there. I saw this bunny out and I thought that this had such a cute shape and so I picked it up because I thought this would be a fun one to cover up too. Why have one rustic bunny when you can have two? So basically we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the tinsel from this bunny. And this one, 
it, it was a bit more difficult because it was really just kind of wound around it a bit differently than the last one. But nonetheless, you can just cut it off, make a hot mess because all the tinsel falls everywhere. And then you're going to have to vacuum and you're going to be hating tinsel as much as I do. I feel like if you're somebody who's not a glitter person, and I am so not a glitter person, you are not a tinsel person. And because even after I vacuumed, I was still finding these tinsel shavings everywhere. And it's probably because I cut it and was pulling it off of this. But nonetheless, can you tell I don't like tinsel? Have I told you that yet? For this bunny, I am using this kind of brown orange gingham. This was a fall and harvest fabric that I saw at Walmart. But I thought, heck, it's orange and brown. That's rustic. It could be used for Easter too because it's orange. I'm gonna make it work for Easter. And so I'm gonna go ahead and cover this bunny with this fabric. I am not using felt for this one because I forgot to pick up another felt roll at the Dollar Tree and I did not feel like making another trip out. And so I do suggest using it because after I was done with this bunny, I wasn't super happy with, again, how pigmented the plastic frame was and how you could see the frame just through the indentations of the fabric. It still came out cute, but again, like I said, I do suggest using some felt before you put your fabric on. And so did I say we're gonna glue this on the same way that we did the last one? if you didn't notice. Because this bunny had so many detailed edges and the arms of the bunny were really close to the body of the bunny on the bottom half, I opted not to use the peaking shears because I felt like it was just gonna be too hard to get an even cut. And sometimes when you're using peaking shears, your fabric can start to fray if you don't get a nice, clean, crisp cut. And so I just felt the best way to go with this one was just to have the clean edges. I wish I could have used the peaking shears. I'm sure somebody will tell me a better way that I could have done it. But when, when and if you get this bunny and do this, you'll see what I'm talking about where the arms and the legs kind of get together. It was just too tight, but it still came out really stinking cute. So yes, we're just gonna go ahead and remove the fabric, the excess fabric, the way I'm doing here. And you can see that if you don't have the peaking shears, it still comes out pretty stinking cute. Now, I forgot to tell you that when you take your bunny apart, I kept the ears because I wanted to use them as a template. I've got some scrap burlap that I actually pulled out of my trash can because I didn't keep the scrap piece. And I'm just gonna go ahead and place that glitter ear right on top of it and cut around it because I wanna make myself burlap ears and these can go out the door because I don't need them. I've got two adorable burlap ears that are gonna be even cuter. Why have those pink glitter ones when you can have burlap? This is rustic, remember? We need rustic ears for our bunny. And really, I'm gonna do this bunny's face the same way as I did the last one using this thicker twine from Walmart for the mouth just because it's thicker and I think it looks better than the thinner twine. I originally thought that I was gonna keep these googly eyes that it came with, but I really just didn't like the look, and so I decided to go with my original way and use the buttons from the Dollar Tree. And of course, we gotta finish this off with a nose and some whiskers. And so yeah, I'm doing that with the thinner twine as well. I really felt like this bunny was missing something. It was missing one of my twine bows right here this finishes it off perfectly. How fun are these? I wanna do more because they're so easy to do and look at the outcome. These are so stinking cute. I love these bunnies. Oh my word, what does Kayla have going on today? I honestly have no clue, but it's probably gonna be funny. You should head on over to her channel, see what she's got going on today. You can find the link to this video in the description box below. I love these bunnies. They're all stinking cute. How fun is that? This was quick, easy, budget friendly, and look at the outcome. If this wasn't bleak to chic, I don't know what is. I think that this is such a fun way to utilize those tinsel bunnies and make them something so stinking cute that you can add to your Easter decor. This is one of those DIYs that's very versatile 
and really can be done to suit any decor style just by simply changing up the fabric to suit your decor and your liking and that's where you just get creative and you make it your own. I hope you all enjoyed today's bleak to chic transformation of the tinsel bunnies that the Dollar Tree is carrying. You might want to pick up a couple and transform them yourself. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive please and bye for now.